Hello, uh, life groups. It's good to be back in, on the saddle and uh, getting after it. And so uh, uh, today I want to talk to you about this week's uh, message. Um, I'm going to be even speaking with the youth tonight on this topic. Uh, but a little bit of call, what, what we all know is identity. Um, and, and a lot of people today, even in the Christian world, tend to have a problem with their identity. Uh, but we know that we are in Christ, therefore we have put aside the flesh, we have died to ourselves, um, and now Christ is the one who lives in us. And so it's no longer I, like Paul says, but it is now Christ. And so identity is very important because once we know our identity, uh, there's a lot of things that we can just leave and let go to the past. Like Paul says, you know, I, I, I look forward, I don't look behind, I just keep pressing toward the goal which is in Christ Jesus. And so I want us to see that, um, how important it is that we know our identity as Christians is not ourselves. Uh, you know, it's kind of odd today that uh, we, we, we battle against these things called identity. Um, you know, that people have this misconception because they're in the world um, or they're of the world. Uh, we are not of the world, we are in the world. And so, well, you know, kind of to get some things straight, um, there is not uh, uh, 150 genders like Facebook wants to tell you. From a physical standpoint, there's only two genders. It says in Genesis that he created them male and female, okay? And so he created them man and woman. Um, Jesus comes back and reiterates that in the Gospels, that uh, they, were give, they, were give, they were created as male and female, man and woman, given to be married to one another, right? and to procreate. And so th there's no identity problem. The world has the identity problem. We as Christians do not have an identity problem. Our identity is not in ourselves, it's in Christ. But we also have uh, uh, this, uh, you know, that people have these gender issues today. And, I, and you know, science has proven uh, on the gender issue. There's only two, male and female. The other thing uh, that the Bible speaks about is uh, same sex. You know, uh, he didn't create them, you know, the same sex. He created them opposite sex for the purpose of, of, of marrying and, and procreating. And that's the purpose. There is no, uh, I can change myself to be a, a, a female or I, you know, if I'm, a, if I'm a female, I can change myself to be a male. Scientifically, it's impossible. So they want to talk about following the science. Let's follow the science because God just says here it is. Um, you're not created for that. You're created the way you know. Uh, the scripture says that the, the the potter is the one that gets to say what the clay is, not the other way around. And I think we we've gotten it kind of discombobulated. Anyway, First Peter. Uh, chapter two tells us this. This is our identity, and 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 it, you know, this is this is awesome for us. And I'm just going to skip through uh, uh, down down to verse uh, nine, right? Verse nine, chapter two, First Peter, chapter two, verse nine. He says, "But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God." that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness, listen, into his marvelous light. Into his marvelous light. And so I want to tell you today that from the beginning of this word to the end of this word, you are surrounded with Jesus. When you put on, it says, the psalmist says, he put on the righteousness of Christ. Paul reiterates that this is we put on our righteousness who is Christ Jesus. We wear the light. You are the light, church. You are the light in a dark world. Jesus says, I am the light. That's what he says. He is the light. He is the one who, who was made flesh, okay, to come and dwell among us. Did you know, did you know that your DNA has actual light in it? That's right. God wrote your DNA code by using His perfect light in you. And you say, well, well, Pastor, is that possible? It's possible. It is possible because it's true. So if you go pull pictures of DNA strands, you will find light in that code. Why? Because He has created you 
to actually bear the light. Now let's think about that. What happened in, in, in Genesis, right, when he created man, right? And he created woman. And then they fell, and it says that God came and walked in the cool of the garden and called their name, right? He called out, and they could, and he said, here we are, we're naked. Well, God comes back, Jesus, who is walking in the cool of the garden, and says, who called you naked? You've eaten from the tree? It's the first time that they ever saw themselves. Because in their perfect being, Adam and Eve were actually light. And so it's a, it's a Hebraic study that goes back. But if you think about it, why would they question themselves when they saw one another? They saw one another in the flesh and not in the spirit. But they saw one another in the flesh because they were not repelling God's light anymore. Because what happens is when sin comes in, God's light actually evacuates. When, when darkness comes in, Okay, the, the light can grow dimmer unless that light is growing closer to God. And so we see this take place in the garden. They were light, okay, before they fell. Then they became flesh. They could see their flesh. Okay, it, it, it's a pretty cool concept because God is perfect light. And in perfect light, we cannot exist. Because perfect light will actually destroy us. That's what God says. Matter of fact, he tells Moses that, right? Moses says, hey, let me see your glory. I want to see you, your face to face. And God said, oh, whoa, you can't see my face, but I'll show you my backside. I'll show you my glory, right? He said, I will show it to you. So go up. What did, what did he do? He went up. And when Moses came down off the mountain, there was something really cool about Moses. He actually went back to his Edenic that's, that, that's what we use in, 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 in theology. Adenic state. Any, anyway, his, his Adam state. His original state, right? He was putting off God, right? Because God had radiated him. And what happened was the inside DNA of Moses began to light up and actually come out of him. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? Now, we can take a quick look at another place in the Bible when Jesus is transfigured. And what happened, it says that his face shone like the sun, right? Okay, so there again we see this happen again where he is taken back to the original state of his being before he came in the flesh, right? And so we see this in Scripture. We see that it's written on our DNA and how God has made us. So our identity is Christ, and Christ in us, and whom was crucified and raised on the third. So talk about this with your group today, or, or this week, and, and you will see that there is a lot of phrases in the Bible that talk about him being the light, and then Jesus comes along and says, we are the light of the world, a city on a hill whose light can't be put out. And today, in this dark days, may it be that the church grows ever brighter because Paul, Peter says that we are like living stones built on one another. We are the house of God is what it says. And this, this is amazing because Hebrews kind of reiterates that in Hebrews chapter 3. Okay, and so pull out the scriptures, do your own thing, talk about identity because we should never struggle with the identity of, of who we are in Christ. We, look, we, we push those things. We failed in the past. We're going to fail in the future, but you know what? Let's push those things aside from the past and not go back to them because that's where the enemy wants us to be. Fearful, wondering, what is our identity? And then the serpent comes in and says, Did God really say that? Did God really say that? So God said that we are the light of the world in a city on a hill. That's what Jesus said. Satan's going to come and say, to, to, to the weak Christians, the ones who are struggling with their fleshly identity, they're going to say, are you sure that God made you a girl? You might be a girl physically, but are you sure that God made you a girl? Maybe he made you a boy, but you know, and you need to start changing all that. That's the enemy coming in to pull and sway people away from the truth. Oh, did God say that it was sinful, um, for a man to be with a man and a girl to be with a girl. It says in 1 Corinthians, 
okay? It says it in uh, Genesis. Um, so yes, it is sinful. So what the enemy is doing is saying, did God really say that? Do you see that? He made us the way he, he made us to follow Him, to be changed. He didn't make us he didn't make us to go after the world. He made us to go after Him. And the more we go after Him, the more that light gets brighter on the inside of us. I, I tell you what, that would be an amazing time to see the face of Moses glow like the sun. Because it did. Because he was literally in the presence of God. And the more he was in the presence of God, the more God actually came out of him. Isn't that a reflection isn't that a reflection of what we talk about today? The Holy Spirit don't just want to stay inside of us. He wants to come out. He wants to light up everything around us. And so we are to take the gospel to the world. And right now, it's growing short. All you got to do is watch some news. It's growing short. Time is short. So it is our job to go and be the gospel wherever we go. Let the light shine out of you. And let it grow ever brighter in you so that you will be a witness to the Creator God. And His name is Jesus. Y'all have a good day. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord. We thank you, God, that uh, for health, Lord. And, and we pray for a strong backbone in these dark days, Lord. That as we go out and as we testify to your goodness, Lord, that people will find you, Lord. Because you're not a hidden God. You are in plain sight. And all they have to do is ask, and you will reveal yourself to them. Lord, I pray that we would be strong in these days. Uh, give, give us that kind of endurance to run the race, like Paul says, and to gain the prize to which we are reaching for, who is Christ Jesus. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a blessed week.